In the Dar al-Islam, as in other agricultural societies, peasants tilled the land as their ancestors had done for centuries before them while manufacturers and merchants supported a thriving urban economy. The Umayyad and the Abbasid empires created a zone of trade, exchange, and communication stretching from India to Iberia. As soldiers, administrators, diplomats, and merchants traveled throughout the Dar al-Islam, they encountered plants, animals, and agricultural techniques peculiar to the empire's various regions. The most important of the transplants of crops <clears throat> traveled west from India to Persia, Southwest Asia, Ar Arabia, Egypt, North Africa, Spain, and the Mediterranean islands of Cyprus, Crete, Sicily, and Sardinia. They included staple crops such as sugarcane, rice, and new varieties of sorghum and wheat, vegetables such as spinach, artichokes, and eggplants, fruits such as oranges, lemons, limes, bananas, coconuts, watermelons, and mangoes and industrial crops such as cotton, indigo, and henna. I'm really good at making glass. Do you want to start up a group investment with me? All right. All right. The Lama, Gaudis, and missionaries helped spread Islamic values throughout the Dar al-Islam and helped bring the Quran and Sharia into the lives of people living far from the birthplace of Islam. Sufis sometimes encourage people to worship Allah in their own ways. The Sufis want respect of people, and because of that, they attracted numerous converts in lands like Persia and India, where long-established religion faiths like Zoroastrianism, Christianity, Buddhism, and Hinduism enjoyed a mass following for centuries. In 610 CE, the Prophet Muhammad underwent a spiritual experience that left him with the conviction that there was only one true God named Allah who ruled the universe. He said that worshipping other gods amounted to wickedness. These messages were sent by the Archangel Gabriel, who instructed him to explain his faith to others. Islamic religion was not a mix of Arab, Jewish, and Christian beliefs, but they did share similar points. Muhammad presented oral recitations, which devout Muslims composed into the holy book named the Quran. The Prophet's preaching brought him into conflict with ruling elites in Mecca because he insisted that Allah was the only true God. This struck many polytheistic Arabs as offensive because they believed multiple gods wielded influence over human affairs. Muhammad's attack on on idol tree presented an economic threat to those who profited from shrine making. He, he didn't decide to leave Mecca until 622 CE, to which he fled to Yathrib. Yathrib was later renamed Mecca, and this holy journey became known as the Hijra. This marked the starting point of the Islamic calendar. Islamic empires were primarily theocratic. The Abbasid dynasty, founded by Abu al-Abbas, considered Dal al islam the principal source of authority. Sharia law and the Quran reinforced male dominance. It gave men the permission to practice polygamy and offered guidance in everyday life such as in business, commercial relationships, inheritance, marriage, family life, and slavery. Why didn't you take out the goat? I'm sorry. I was supposed to kill it. You know what? I don't want you to be my wife anymore, but unfortunately... Ow! I'm divorcing you! Okay, leave! Muslims borrowed the compass from the Chinese and borrowed the Latin cell from Southeast Asian and Indian mariners. They also used the astrolabe to calculate latitude. To help stimulate the economy, Islamic banks of the Abbasid period created a system of loans and used letters of credit called SAC. SAC was basically the modern-day check. Muslim conquerors borrowed Indian mathematics and science to improve on algebra, trigonometry, and geometry.